In this Composer Notes, you'll learn about the function block diagram which graphically depicts how a controller is configured for an application. The function block diagram view features the canvas, which contains all the function blocks representing inputs and outputs to the controller, and the other function blocks that are used in the application. The library, which contains function blocks that are available to be added to the canvas. The parameter list, used to view and adjust the settings for each function block the help window with documentation for each function block, and the navigator which lets you adjust the view of the canvas. There's one block for each of the controller's physical inputs and outputs such as sensor connections and solid state relays. Right from the start, these are located on the canvas. The label at the bottom of these blocks indicates the input or output number and the number of the flex module on which the physical connection is located. Input blocks feature a black strip on the left listing the screw terminals to which the sensor or other physical hardware connects on the corresponding flex module. The typical wiring is shown graphically. The icon indicates the type of data the block transmits. On output blocks, the screw terminations and typical wiring are shown at the right and the block displays a simplified schematic of the controller's internal output circuit. The controller is configured for an application by connecting signals between blocks on the canvas. A signal carries data from a transmitter on the right side of one block to a receiver on the left side of another block. Connections on the right side of a function block transmit data for use by other blocks. Connections on the left side of a function block receive data for use by that block. While input and output function blocks are always on the canvas, other function blocks are found in the library. If the library window is not on top, click the library tab to view it. The library is where you'll find blocks such as control loops, alarms, and depending on your controller's options, you may see cascade loops, a profile engine, and math, logic, timer, and other function blocks. You may have to scroll down to see more of the blocks. The number next to the block's name indicates how many blocks of that type remain available to add to the canvas. Click the parameter tab or double click a block to see its parameter list. The parameter list displays a function block settings. These settings determine what the function block does. The help window displays the documentation for the selected function block. Some blocks can be used in many different ways. Click a link at the top of the help topic to jump to the corresponding section. Each block's documentation describes its transmitters and receivers and each of its parameters. The navigator window shows the entire canvas. The outline indicates the editor window's view of the canvas. Use the scale control to see more or less of the canvas in the editor window. Drag the outline to adjust the editor window's view of the canvas. You can make fine adjustments to the view by dragging an empty spot on the canvas. One final note. The input and output function blocks that appear on the canvas are there because the controller is set to expect flex modules with those inputs and outputs. If you don't see the inputs and outputs you expect, use the pluggable modules view to set the controller to expect the flex modules you plan to use. If you set the controller to expect modules that aren't yet installed, the inputs and outputs for those modules will appear in the function block diagram, however the application won't turn any outputs on until the expected modules are detected. Learn more about the function block diagram in the next Composer Notes.